Hi guys, Judy here. It is um, the uh, 21st. It is Saturday night. And um, oh, it's about 10.30 here in California. And sorry, I'm yawning. Um, I have a message I want to encourage. This message is for a warrior bride. It is for the Bride of Christ, and it's for those um, who are seeking a deeper walk with the Lord. Um, and I, I just have some encouragement for you from the Father that He wants to give you through some, um, just from some experiences and things that He wants me to share with you. So, um this connect connectivity with our groom, this oneness with our groom is very important. It always has been important, but even more so now that we're about to consummate with our creator, become one with our creator and get married. And this is male and female. God uses the marriage analogy for a reason so we can relate, but it's a spiritual consummation. So it's not like an earthly marriage, but he uses that analogy so that we can, uh, the marriage analogy, so that we can draw similarities and understand relationship. And I, I love that he uses that analogy because who can't understand love? Both men and women, you know, I mean, that is on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you ever studied psychology, I mean, the need to be loved. That is the highest one. You need to be loved. Okay, so. Uh, it's very good that God uses that. People need love. And um, anyway, so guys, this whole intimacy with God, this whole oneness with him, I just, I'm telling you, God wants me to make more messages on it. He really wants his bride to get it. And I'm his bride. I'm with you. I'm getting it with you. Um, I'm going into deeper places with God that I've never been before. And it's sometimes a little scary to me because, um, it just is, it's just, in my case, it looks like reckless abandon. And I've already lost so much control since 2013. He's allowed me not to have pretty much any control over my life, which is scary for a mom, you know, and um, things like that, but it's, it's okay. It's him. So when I say scary, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's a controlled burn, you know, <laughs> when they're, when they're burning up, uh, the land for a purpose, it's called a controlled burn. Okay. It's not going to get out of hand. It's under control. It's a controlled burn. We have a lot of those in California when it gets real dry and, um, it's the same thing with God. It's, it's a controlled situation but it's him. And a lot of you are in those situations right now. So when I'm making this video, I'm speaking to you, but I'm and encouraging you, but I'm also with you. I'm being encouraged by God and growing deeper as I, even as I give this message. Um, so he had me sitting home thinking about some things later on in the afternoon, just laying here. He wanted me to look at a few things online and, and a lot, oftentimes when he t directs me to, to do some little research and studying online, which mostly consists of watching videos, um, he talks to me as I watch them. And, um, and so that's what we were doing. So we're sitting together and oftentimes I just have the videos playing and then I'm off in some other world. I either spaced out because I'm tired or he had me space out and think about something else. But anyway, um, so while I was spending time with him doing what he asked, just kind of being led, just kind of enjoying the stillness of today, later on in the day, um, this whole oneness issue came up again in God. I, you might not think of God this way, but I want to share a personal experience that I believe he wants me to share now so that you can understand. <clears throat> We're made in God's image. 
so we can understand our creator. Now, he's not mortal, but we're made in his image, so he's a lot like us, or we're a lot like him, if that's how you want to say it, okay? <laughs> um, but in the early days, when God first fell on my son, um, he had me in really weird situations because he had me quit my job and I was largely talking to people on YouTube who I didn't know, but who I connected with that God, people that God had me connect with. And some of these people were shady characters, you know, but God said, talk to them, you know, both male and female. It was some strange situations that he put me in and, um, talking to people you don't know on the phone, talking to people in emails and on private messaging on YouTube and, and back. And that was just all foreign to me because that was in 2013 and I wasn't, hadn't lived my life like that. I was very busy. I didn't have time for anything on YouTube. Um, but then it was like, okay, this is what you're having me do. And this one particular person he was having me talk with a lot. I grew quite fond of this person. God was using unconventional methods to reach this person through me. And, you know, whenever you God is using you to reach a lost and dying world, um, he's also reaching you. You know, you're not just helping them or doing a service for God. God's also working on you at the same time. And, um... So it's always a mutually beneficial when it's when it's him. When you're doing what God has called you to do, it's mutually beneficial. When it's you in your flesh and making up your own stuff, it's usually not. You'll feel stress. You'll feel I mean, I'm not saying you don't feel stressed doing it God's way too, but it's mutually beneficial. And that's how I like to look at it. And when things start to get one sided and strained, I stop and I say, God, wait, did I lose the path here? Are you still wanting me on this assignment or what are we doing? What's going on? Where are we supposed to be? You know, and I always stay in touch. This intimacy with God, I can't stress it enough. So very important. Anyway, as I was connecting with this person who I believe really Well, let's just say I don't know where they stood, but the Lord was having me spend a lot of time on this particular person. Um, I'll never forget how sad he was. And I cried for an hour in the tub, actually. <laughs> I sat in a hot tub and just cried with God and sat with him. And um, I, I literally felt his rejection. I don't really want to get into too much of the story because I, can't, I have to make really short videos now. It's hard to cut them off. But basically, the long story short is that this person, after so much work and labor on my part and God's part, this person ultimately just rejected God and only wanted me, the messenger, but not the message. And I felt the rejection God felt. And he said, see? You see how that feels? You see how that hurts? He let me feel it. I said, oh God, please take this away. I can't handle your pain. I felt the rejection. Did you guys know that God feels rejected and lonely and sad? I didn't know that until 2013 when he just supernaturally fell in our house and, and did all these amazing things. And I just cried. I was like, no. He said, see, he wants you. He doesn't want me see how that feels it hurts and I was like ouch I could literally feel God's rejection I felt how it felt to be rejected like that it's nothing like when you get rejected on earth it's like whatever your worst rejection on earth it's 10 times more you guys it's so bad and I also felt God's jealousy like see he likes him more than he likes this person likes you more than me it hurts. And I just was like, oh, it just, I can't even tell you how bad it hurt. It hurt. I just sat in the tub and cried. And God did lift it because I begged him. I said, don't let me keep feeling this rejection that you feel. It's too painful. I can't. 
I can't handle it in this earthen vessel. It's too much. And he lifted it. But he wanted to show me the jealousy and the sorrow and the rejection that he feels. He was jealous that this person liked me more than him. And, and he was sad and he was rejected by this person. And, but he had me on this assignment knowing it would end this way. But he still had me on the assignment because it's worth it. Because when you love someone, you do, you try everything. Even if you know the final outcome is not going to work, you still try it because that's what love does. Love never gives up. Love's all, love always hopes. And that's how our God is. He never gives up on people. He always hopes, even though he knows that some are never going to choose him or they're going to choose him later in the game. He still reaches out. And I have to end this video and I will continue it.